have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted. And every hill and mountain shall be made low. The rough places will be made plain. And the crooked places will be made straight. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed in all the One day, down in Alabama, with its vicious races, with its governor having his lips dripping with the words of interposition and nullification, one day right down in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. Good evening. Good evening to all in the sound of my voice. This being the vir first virtual banquet for me and for the Golden Royalties chapter of AWA. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Alyssa Newby, and I'm the battalion commander for the Van Horn Charles West Battalion. I would like to formally welcome everyone to our virtual 2020 Veterans Day ceremony. Although this may differ from our ceremonies in the past, our goal is still to honor each and every veteran who has served our country. Thank you for your sacrifice and selfless service. We hope this pays tribute to our veterans. Hello, my name is Kiara Levitt, and I am the battalion command sergeant major. I would like to introduce you to the playing of our national anthem and the presentation of the colors, led by Cadet 2nd Lieutenant Catalina Harris.
Hello, my name is Cadet Captain Sam O'Neill. We will now introduce our service flags and the playing of our service songs. The cadets representing the branches are Cadets Second Lieutenant Catalina Harris, Command Sergeant Major Kiara Leva, Second Lieutenant Miguel Madrigal, Corporal Kayla Hernandez, and Second Lieutenant Austin Evans. Lift every voice and sing 
Till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling seas. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. Good evening. I am honored to welcome you all to the 28th Annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Education and Scholarship Event, hosted by the Golden Royalties Chapter of the American Business Women's Association. My name is Kathy Shuley, and I am the District 3 Vice President on the National Board of Directors and Trustee for the Stephen Bufton Memorial Educational Fund for 2019-2021. I wish to thank the Golden Royalties Chapter for including me in this wonderful evening. Dr. King's greatest legacy was his unwavering love for all mankind, his determination to change a culture that defined and limited freedom, growth, and advancement based on the color of one's skin was extraordinary. His determination was supported by a faith that taught him all of us were created equal and deserved the same rights regardless of our race or beliefs. He also knew the importance of education in realizing our true potential and to break the bindings that held some back. Dr. Tink King taught that no one should be limited by the constraints of another's attitudes or actions potential for growth, success, and contribution to society should only be determined by one's own imagination, ability to dream, and to set a course for greatness. Love had to be the foundation for his dream because, as he stated, hate is too great a burden to bear. Only through love could he face the hate born of fear and ignorance. His faith kept him on that path, taking him into situations unimaginable today, focused on the promise of freedom for all. Dr. King said, Faith is taking the first step even when you can't see the whole staircase. I doubt there's anyone in attendance today who hasn't had to hold that very idea at least once in their life and take that leap of faith. To take that first step is to begin the journey and the outcome can be liberating and rewarding. 
This event is also an opportunity to honor Coretta Scott King, Dr. King's wife. She created her own legacy in the fight for justice and equal opportunity for all. She met her husband while attending the New England Conservatory of Music in Boston. After graduation, the two returned to Alabama, which became the epicenter for the civil rights movement. Imagine her capacity for love and justice, continuing the movement, even after it resulted in constant threats to her family and left her a widow. Instead of folding, she fought on and even received the Universal Love Award. This incredible woman represents an ideal we should all aspire to. Coretta didn't stop fighting racism and economic issues and understood that education opportunities would play a key role in the advancement of all. This would be one of many rights issues, causes she could support keeping the dream alive. Turning back in time to three years prior to Dr. King's and Coretta's marriage, a man named Hillary Bufton Jr. recognized another need in our country. He wrote, it was my feeling all women were seeking and deserved equal business opportunities. They had gained tremendous business knowledge during World War II through necessity, and I felt a new organization for all business women was needed. He teamed up with three Kansas City businesswomen and founded the American Business Women's Association. The mission of ABWA is to bring together businesswomen of diverse occupations and to provide them with opportunities to help themselves and others grow personally and professionally through leadership, education, networking support, and national recognition. Business women were now able to build that network and extend their reach to help others grow. Life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? This is Dr. King's edict to examine our actions and know that we all have a responsibility to help others. ABWA gives us the tools and resources to do just that so that we, we may all keep the dream alive. ABWA provides leadership opportunities that begin with involvement in the local leagues. This is done through committee work and serving on the league board. After serving as my chapter president, I no longer had the hesitation or fear in speaking in front of a group of people. Collaborating with the other members gave me confidence that my viewpoint mattered. My contribution held value in the group efforts. Education is another key component to ABWA membership. Professional development plays an essential role in the ABWA mission. That development is visible in our monthly meeting presentations, in the numerous continuing ed education courses available on Community Connections, regional and national conferences, and in our support of furthering college and trade school educations. Hillary Bufton established the Stephen Bufton Memorial Educational Fund after the death of his five-year-old son to further education opportunities for women. With national and impact scholarships, the outright grant, and the Business Skills Tuition Reimbursement Program, we provide the funds to women both members and non-members, every year to help offset education costs and further their opportunities. One function as a trustee to this fund is to review the scholarship applications. It is amazing to see women of all ages, backgrounds, and life journeys putting their dreams into actual blueprints for the future. It is truly inspiring. Many scholarship recipients go on to become vital members to this association, participating in local leagues and serving on the National Board of Directors. They truly are our future and we will work with them to keep the dream alive. I cannot adequately express the reward for helping others. The knowledge that our individual success is inextricably linked to our collective success, assures the future for generations of women to follow.
As we continue to grow and invest in each other, we help all women thrive and keep the dream alive. I am so blessed to be a part of this event. The 2021 Martin Luther King Honors of Keeping the Dream Alive Awards. We will see special recognition given to those honorees that include such categories as community service, humanitarian, education, medicine, gospel, music, entrepreneurship, and, and so much more. Each recipient has followed Dr. King's edict in helping others and by doing so is keeping the dream alive. Our inspiring keynote speaker, Lieutenant Colonel Joanne Spear Martin, will fill us with a sense of hope and her story of the power of faith, persistence, and the will to live. She has transformed her struggles into victories and now is keeping the dream alive in her continued service to others. Although I will miss the hugs that an in-person event allows, I am immensely proud of the Golden Royalties chapter members for continuing their efforts to keep the dream alive by holding this event virtually. Ladies, you have risen to the challenge, and I am honored to call you my sisters. Thank you, and God bless you all. Good evening to the members of the Golden Royalties Chapter and their distinguished guests. My name is Sharon Godby, and I'm the 2020-2021 National President of the American Business Women's Association. I bring you greetings and congratulations on behalf of the entire National Board of Directors as you celebrate this, your 28th annual momentous event in honor of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Mrs. Coretta Scott King. I'd like to share a quote from Dr. King, one that I've shared in the past, but it's even more relevant today as you ask in this year's theme, who is keeping the dream alive? It goes like this. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. The time is always right to do what is right. To say that 2020 was a challenge to all of us is a gross understatement. With the social and civil injustice, the political unrest, the health crisis with COVID-19, and the economic hardships on our people. It's up to us to keep the dream alive. We must overcome, and we will. Just keep praying for better days and more opportunities to help others. Thank you to the Golden Royalties Chapter for your continued commitment to provide educational opportunities for women in your league and in your community, and for the recognition you provide through the MLK Keeping the Dream Alive Awards. I wish for you another year of success with this meaningful project and congratulate you on your first ever virtual event. Thank you also to all of you in attendance this evening for supporting this mission and for supporting women. Remember, stay strong, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep the dream alive. Thank you. My past had disturbed my nerve. But you was black in the restaurant. You didn't even get started. 
sir. I thank the Lord for the goodness that he brings. Thank the Lord for Dr. Martin Luther King. You know the real history. Who's black history? Who's black history? Do you know the real history? Without black history, where would we be? Do you know the real history? Who's black history? Who's black history? Do you know the real history? Without black history, where would we be? Martin Luther King brought darkness into light, but he saved my people by fighting for a bright 2020. Yes, we face a lot of fears with this corona, this risk work, this being the year. It's time to stay alive with our eyes on the prize. Watching towards freedom, we will rise. I was born to believe every breath that I breathe has a purpose like Adam and Eve. My 2021 vision locked down the pack. The past is in the past. I'm never going back. Time out for quiet lips. Our voices must be heard. No compromise. No giving in this time to speak the word of hope, unity, equal rights for all. It doesn't matter if you're rich, poor, big, or small. I'm educating myself because knowledge is power, representing my community as a scholar. Yeah, oh, you know the real history. Who's black history? Who's black history? Do you know the real history? Without black history, where would we be? Yeah, do you know the real history? Who's black history? Who's black history? Do you know? The real history, without black history, where would we be? Hello, my name is Barbara Laura. I'm a 2018 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. honoree. I am so honored to be a part of the 28th annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Educational and Scholarship Event. We're honoring several individuals who is keeping the dream alive. I want to congratulate the 2021 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. honorees. I want to applaud you for all that you're doing in the community, helping, encouraging, inspiring others to build a stronger community. We must continue to reach and teach others about keeping the dream alive. I want to thank God for each and every one of you all as you continue to press on to inspire others to keep the dream alive. God bless you and all of your endeavors as you continue to do your part to make a difference in someone's life. Have a very blessed, productive, and safe year. I am truly honored to be selected by the Golden Royalties Chapter of the ABWA to congratulate the 2021 awardees of the Martin Luther King Keeping the Dream Alive Award. I can't tell you how excited I was in 2020 when I was selected, but when I saw the names of those selected this year, I felt incredibly special because I know many of your works in the community and how you have helped to make a difference. Again, congratulations and keep on doing the great work you're doing that is keeping the dream of Dr. Martin Luther King alive. Hello, I am Dr. Eva Tucker Nevels, one of the past 2018 MLK Junior honorees. Congratulations to you. It is such a worthy distinction to be a 2021 MLK Junior honoree. Collectively and individually, you have done so much to keep the dream alive in the work you do, you have done, and will do. Your work is making the difference and impacting so many others. You are the change that we are so grateful for. Along with your family, your friends, and all of us here, we applaud your impressive contribution and tenacious effort towards the betterment of our neighborhoods, community, city, state, and country. Congratulations. May God continue to shine upon you and bless you. Congratulations again. It is indeed a pleasure to greet you. This being your 28th annual celebration concerning Martin Luther King and education. Uh, I'm Mark Dupree, the Wyandotte County District Attorney. And I want to say to the Golden Royalty Chapter, thank you for in the past honoring me. But more importantly, I want to say to the honorees upon this year, 
what you have done is exemplified and lived the legacy of Dr. King. You've given to the community, you've helped those who are watching, and you've given a hand up to those who are trying to pursue the dream that Dr. King had for all of us. So I want to say congratulations, keep pushing, keep doing what you're doing because it is on your shoulders and those before you that we all stand. Thank you and be blessed. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I have the pleasure of introducing our speaker for tonight. And let me tell you, you are in for a treat. Her name, Lieutenant Colonel Joanne Spear Martin. Lieutenant Martin was born September 1, 1955 in Wartsburg, Germany, and became a natural citizen of the United States in 1957. She graduated from Gramley State University in Louisiana on December 16, 1977, with a Bachelor of Liberal Arts degree in Biology and Chemistry. On that same day, she was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the United States Air Force through the Air Force Reserve Officer Training Program as an honor graduate. In May of 1989, she earned her Master's of Art degree from Ball State University in Muncie, Indiana. Her professional military education includes completion of the Su Supply Officers Course, Squadron Officer School, Air Force Mortuary School, Morale, Welfare, Recreation and Service Commanders School, Marine Command and Staff College, Air Command and Staff College, Air War College. She was promoted to major one year below the zone and promoted to Lieutenant Colonel on April 1, 1994. She retired in May of 1998. Lieutenant Colonel Martin served almost 21 years in the United States Air Force before retiring. She has seen many parts of the world and has been a guest speaker many times throughout the United States. After retiring, her talents brought many new endeavors. She taught elementary school for a while, worked as a customer service for the YMCA, and went on the speaking circuit, and was a secretary and graphic design for First Baptist Church in O'Fallon, Illinois. She recently retired a second time after 17 years as a multi-million dollar realtor for Nestor Realtor in O'Fallon, Illinois. Adding to her resume is her new book, My Life's Lemonades, The Bitter and the Sweet, which will have you laughing and crying all in one read. It sold over a thousand copies. She tells how God turned her lemons into sweet lemonade. Lieutenant Colonel Martin is a member of the New Life Christ Interdenominational Church. She holds a lifetime membership in Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, Top Ladies of Distinction Incorporated. She's a member of Blacks in Government and an alumni of Grambling State University, a member of the NAACP. She is a past post commander of VFW Post 11064 and a lifetime member and presently active in post 4183. She is also a member of the Tuskegee Airmen, a member of Outstanding Women of America. She has been married to Garnell Martin, finally called Marty, for 34 plus years. I present to you Lieutenant Colonel Joanne Spear Martin. Life has its measures of setbacks. Some are small, some are larger in size. There are portions of every existence which clearly we'd like to revise. But stresses and problems are normal. Disappointments are part of the game. 
If we let these moments control us, we must assume part of the blame. It's how we react that's important. We mustn't distort what we feel. Let's work with what life has to offer and never begrudge a bad deal. Depression can never assist us in weathering woes on this old earth. We shouldn't let each disappointment give rise to more than it's worth. Instead, we should try to discover as life in intensity mounts, a way to place things in perspective. You see, how we cope is what really counts. Good evening. Good evening to all in the sound of my voice. This being the vir first virtual banquet for me and for the Golden Royalties chapter of ABWA, I don't know all the dignitaries on the other end of the camera, but I want you to know I'm recognizing you first. I would also like to give special recognition to Mrs. Slaughter for the wonderful introduction and Mrs. Charlotte Collins, who is president of this chapter and thought enough of me to ask me to speak. Who is keeping the dream alive? What dream might you ask? On August the 21st in 1963, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. delivered a speech at the mall on the Lincoln Memorial grounds. You know the speech, I have a dream. That was my Martin Luther King voice. It was given during a time America was uneasy. It was given during a time a nation was torn by social and racial unrest. Does that sound familiar for right now? King's oratory was soaring. It painted a clear picture of how America could be. The imagery in his speech was vivid and his cause was right. What's your dream? One of the dreams of this chapter of ABWA is to educate and give scholarships. This is the 28th year they have had this fundraiser. So if you are in the sound of my voice, please donate in some way to help them keep their dream alive. Okay, let's get started. <clears throat> Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was a civil rights activist, but he was also a Baptist minister. And that is among other things. He was a man that had a dream for the future and he pursued it until his assassination. He instilled in others to have a dream and pursue them as well. In keeping his dream alive, if you should also keep your dream alive, in doing so, you will ultimately be helping to keep Dr. King's dream alive. You know, the more I focused on the theme, the more I asked myself why I was chosen to speak. Of course, I was an ABWA member at one time, but no, that wasn't it. Then I thought maybe because I would speak for free and there was no transportation involved, that wasn't it either. It finally dawned on me, maybe it was because I was a successful female working in what once was a man's world, the United States Air Force. I was supporting Dr. King's dream by fighting for my country. I'm a member of a racial minority and black lives do matter as do all lives. I'm a member of a religious minority. I have a diverse family background with a rainbow of colors and cultures. I have family living among a culture only known by faith heaven. And although we've never experienced it, we are all just dying to get there. I have traveled to Africa, Korea, Japan, Germany, Switzerland, Australia, Turkey, and a few others. And after all that thinking about multicultural societies, diversity, and my role in discipleship, the dreams I have had and the dreams I have changed. I stopped on the belief 
that I was asked to speak because Mrs. Collins realized I have always had a dream that I pursued and I never give up. I'm sure Dr. King would agree with me when I say with prayer, all things, all things are possible. Before I get serious, I want to put keeping the dream alive in perspective with a story. You do know to keep the dream alive, you have to do your part. The honorees tonight, they have done a great job of doing their part in various ways. Well, one day God was thinking about all the folks who are blessed to be breathing and have a job and wondered just how they were handling his blessing. You do know that in today's world of computers and downsizing, and more importantly, COVID-19, it is a blessing to be employed. Well, God sent an angel down to check on the workers. The angel returned and told him, Lord, it's bad down there. 95% of the workers are not reaching their potential. They're bad-mouthing their bosses, taking extremely long breaks, calling in sick when they're not sick, and they're stopping others from enjoying their blessing with their bad attitudes. Only 5% are actually showing how thankful they are to be alive, and they have a job, and they're producing 100% at work every day not taking breaks in order to get the job finished early and encouraging others with their positive attitude. God said, this percentage is not good. He said, well, I think I decide to send a letter to the 5% that are doing good and encourage them with words to keep up the good work because you never give up. Better days are coming. God's letter was distributed last month to that 5% that were doing their part. How many of you know what the letter said? Well, I'm just waiting on a reaction. Raise your hand, holler, shout, do anything. I see no reactions at all. So that means you didn't get a letter either. Well, I'm retired. What's your excuse? In keeping with the theme tonight, who is keeping the dream alive? There are skills that are attached. And I know we have a lot of leaders listening. I also realize that there are some that are listening here as followers and they're quite satisfied in that position. Well, I'm here to tell you that small dreams are accomplished easy. If it's worthwhile, it's worth working hard for. You must set your focus on big dreams and never let them die to be a good leader. Tough times never last. Tough people do. And I'm tough, but so are you. You have got to develop a hunger for a positive change. And whether it's your life or your school or your workplace, You've got to stay hungry and keep the dream for a better future alive. Blacks were slaves, but they were hungry and the shackles came off. Martin Luther King Jr. was hungry and the Civil Rights Act was passed. Rosa Parks was hungry and I can ride in the front of the bus now. Barack Obama was hungry and became our first African-American president. Nelson Mandela was hungry and he rose from jail to once again head a continent. On January the 20th, 2021, an African-American female, Camilla Harris, will become vice president of the United States of America. How about that? That's a double first. She was hungry. Good leaders instill in others a hunger and bring about positive change. Are you doing your share to keep the dream alive? Let's start with the young. Instill a hunger in our young folks today because like it or not, they are our future leaders. Don't just teach them, but inspire them to want to learn. 
In the words of Martin Luther King Jr., teach them. If you can't be a pine on the top of the hill, be a shrub down in the valley. But be the best little shrub on the side of the hill. Be a bush if you can't be a tree. If you can't be a highway, just be a trail. If you can't be a sun, be a star. It isn't by size that you win or fail. Be the best at whatever you are. Our children must learn to build on our beginnings and lift up the one in five children still living below the poverty level. Strive to make yourself an example to others. And before you know it, they'll call you a role model. You know, I retired a while ago from the Air Force and I received a brass photo album that had my dates of service on it. Well, the dates were wrong and I didn't want to embarrass anybody, so I didn't say anything. When the excitement all died down, I went to the graver to have the dates changed. And he asked me why I waited so long to have it corrected. I told him something that I had heard from one of my parents, but on a different occasion, of course. The beginning and the ending date are not as important as the dash in the middle. It stands for the work I've done. It stands for the productivity. It stands for everything in between the start and the finish. That applies in life as well. You're born. Dash. You die. I waited because the engraver had gotten my dash right and the rest wasn't really important. Whether you are a leader or a follower, you must make sure you keep your dash in focus. Remember that if you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. A person without a dream is a person who needs to be picked up. Give them your hand. Help them. Encourage them. You have to have a dream and keep your dream in focus. Just like Dr. King said, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. In the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. You can't give up ever. You gotta hang in there. My personal words of life's perspective, you will never win the lottery if you don't buy a ticket. Translated, you have got to do your part. I had a dream at one time for a man in my life a man that could put up with my controlling ways and love me like I love him. At the age of 27, I said, keep that dream. And at the age of 28, I said, keep that dream. At the age of 29, I said, Joanne, you got to keep that dream. And at the age of 30, I was telling myself, oh, it's all in God's time, Joanne. Never give up. You got to keep that dream. Long story short, I've been married to the same wonderful man for 34 years. You know, some of us, we lose confidence in praying for our dreams because we don't recognize what God sends us as an answer. We pray for strength and God gives us difficulties which make us strong. We pray for wisdom and God sends us problems, the solutions of which develop our wisdom. We pray for prosperity, and God gives us brain and brawn to work. We pray for courage, and God sends us danger to overcome. We pray for favors, and God gives us opportunities, such as the one I have tonight, to tell others what God can do if you keep your faith and your dream alive. Now, let me tell you when the importance of faith, prayer, and one of my dreams became a very big test for me. You do know that God will test you every now and then to keep you on the straight and narrow. <clears throat> the good book says, Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future, hope 
and a future. In 2011, I began to wonder about how long my future would be. You see, I had left God once, and that's another speech altogether. But I will never do that again. I had to keep the faith and believe in my dream. What was my dream at that time? Life. My daily scripture was Psalms 118, 17 through 18. I will not die, but live. And I will proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. In 2011, I had 36 inches of my colon removed because of a disease called Crohn's. I went into a four hour surgery to get a colostomy bag and I came out nine hours later without one. But I had folks all over the country praying for me and my dream. I had to keep the faith that God answers prayer and he would fulfill my dream. What was my dream? Life. Later that year, my stomach incision busted wide open in my kitchen from an internal abscess that I did not even know I had. My husband rushed me back to the hospital, 30 minute drive, while I held my stomach together with a bath towel. My faith caused me to continue praying all the way to St. Louis and today, me and my dream are still alive. Thank you, Jesus. What was my dream? Life. In 2012, I had three strokes, which required a two hour surgery and four hours later, I came out and I could move all my limbs and I could see cause I was blinded. Dr. King will tell you if you were stand, if he was standing with me with prayer and faith, all things are possible. I still had my dream, life. In 2013, while still recuperating, I had stage four breast cancer, which required another surgery and 54 days of radiation. After my breast surgery, I went to yet another surgery to get ports installed in my chest for chemo. And after trying twice on each side of my chest, I was told I did not have arteries strong enough for a port. Never give up on your dream, hallelujah. The doctor said, Joanne, I'm not sure what we're gonna do now. And I responded, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pray without ceasing. On the 6th of April this year, 2020, I became a seven year cancer survivor. Thank you, Lord. I have never gotten a port. What was my dream? Life. Well, you've heard about 2011, 2012, and 2013. As if that wasn't enough, in 2014, I had a heart attack. And it's only by the grace and mercy of my sweet, sweet savior that I am still here. I'm one of his miracle children and he has a purpose for my life, just like he has a purpose for yours and yours and yours. With the lemons that life dealt me, he has turned them into a sweet lemonade and I am still keeping the dream alive whatever way I can. While going through the breast cancer, I wrote a book to get my mind off of all I was going through. And by the way, that's the title of my book. My life's lemonade, the bitter and the sweet. It's no longer a bestseller. It was written in 2013, but it sold over a thousand copies and it inspired many people who wanted to give up on whatever their dream was. That much sickness, that much pain, that many distractions on your focus can cause your faith in your dream to waver. All that happened to me in four, four years, a four year time span. It can cause a curve in the road of faith. I never stopped praying, but my faith in that dream was getting weak. 
The sight of my dream was getting further and further and further away. Now remember, at that time, my biggest dream was life. That's when the warriors kick in. You know the prayer water, warriors. They hold on to you tight. They urge you to continue to fight. They renew your focus on dreams to keep it strong. They never let you give up. Remember the Bible says, not only pray, but have faith in what you pray and believe with expectation. Short story right here. A city boy was asked if there were five birds in a tree and one bird got shot, how many would be left? The city boy said four. Well, when the country boy was asked the same question, the country boy replied, if one bird was shot, there will be no more birds in the tree. The country boy knew if a gun went off, there would be no more birds. You see how life's experiences guide us to think differently sometimes. Our thought processes are different because they are based on our individual experiences. As I started to heal, my values changed, my outlook changed. Things that were so important were no longer important anymore. Big things that cause us much worry. I was able to turn over to God and let them alone. How many of you pray and then you try to help God in some way? Well, maybe if I do this, then that'll turn out all right. You know, I couldn't sleep last night because I was worried about this and I was worried about that. Well, let me tell you, God doesn't need no help. He needs you to hold on to your dream. He needs you to pray and believe with expectation that he will work it out. Matthew 17, 20 says, And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If you have faith of a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place. And it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. You hear me? Nothing shall be impossible unto you. We must never give up on our dreams or our prayers. God hears all prayers, spoken and unspoken. You may not get the answer you want, but God also knows best. I've had, and I still have, many dreams but life will always be one of them. I now have dreams of getting my doctoral degree, owning a banquet center, opening a fast food salad bar, opening a craft store, starting a nonprofit foundation that will help others, how to inspire and spread the word of God. I'm working right now on two additional books. What's your dream? Finish or further your education, open a business, get that job you've been thinking about, buy that new house. You know, dreams come in many forms. And my advice is everyone should have a dream. You may have to tweak it a little bit, add a little bit to it, subtract a little bit from it, but you never, never, never give up on it. There is a gift in each and every one of us, whether it's art, teaching, building, counseling, writing, you have to stir up that gift and focus on it. Your gift may help someone keep their dream alive. In Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech, he referenced four Bible verses. Amos, 5th chapter 24th verse says, But let justice roll on like a river and righteous like a never failing stream. Amos throughout the text voices prophetic rage against the injustices of his day. Does that sound familiar? The second scripture, Psalms 30, fifth verse, weeping may endure for a night, but rejoicing, hallelujah, comes in the morning. This biblical illusion provides a moral basis for King's argument. We know that we all face problems and trials and 
in life, and some of these are completely out of our control. These are trials that test our faith, our faith in our dreams and in our prayers. The third scripture, Galatians 3rd chapter, 28th verse, there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ. We are created by one and all made in the image of God. We recognize from this passage that each of us is connected through our creation and our redemption. Fulfilling Dr. King's dream pleases God. We should love one another as we are all God's children. What's happening in your dreams? Are they being realized or are they gradually just kind of fading away? Have you lost hope because they now seem impossible? We can all learn how to revive our dreams and keep them alive from Dr. King. He gave us the answer in the fourth scripture when he quoted Isaiah 40, saying, I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted and every hill and mountain shall be made low. The rough places will be made straight and the glory of God shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. Dr. King understood that his dream of social justice and racial equality was in harmony with God's dream and that God's dream would surely be realized. Fulfilling your dream helps keep Dr. King's dream alive. You may make someone else's day in the process. COVID has caused an extreme makeover of our normal. If we did not have people risking their safety so we could have a life, where would we be? Tonight, we have honored some of those people, people from all walks of life who are dream keepers. There are many more out there keeping the dream alive. You might be one of them. You might be one of them. I'm almost finished. I want you to bear with me now. Sometimes we have to step back and evaluate and do a makeover in our life such as right now with the new normal. This little story just kind of summed it up for me about life's makeover. And this lady, I'm gonna call her Joyce, but I know some of you know somebody just like her, so you can call her anything you wanna call her. Joyce was a middle-aged woman who had a heart attack and was taken to the hospital. While on the operating table, she had a near-death experience, except Joyce saw more than the white light Joyce saw God. Upon seeing God, she asked, Is this it, Lord? Is my time up? God said, No, Joyce. You have another 43 years, two months, eight days to live. So, upon recovery, Joyce decided to stay in the hospital and have a facelift, liposuction, tummy tuck. She even had her hairdresser come in. Colored her hair. She thought she had lots of time, so she may as well make the best of it. After her last operation, she was released from the hospital. And as she crossed the road heading home, she was knocked over and killed by an ambulance. Arriving in front of God at the pearly gates, you know she had something to say. She proceeded to spill her thoughts. I thought you said, I had another 40 odd years, Lord. Why didn't you pull me out of the way of that ambulance? God responded, Joyce, is that you? I didn't recognize you. I sure hope you're laughing because I thought it was funny. So I want you to first know that, I, that an extreme makeover will not only change the way you see yourself, but it will also change the way others see you. Keep Dr. King's dream alive in whatever manner you can. And keep your dream alive by staying hungry and encouraging others to stay hungry too. If you have to get in trouble to make that change, the late Senator John Lewis would say, make it good trouble. And I think my time is up. But I thought I would leave you on a very special note. It's short, 
but it's powerful and it's personal. In the search for me, I discovered truth. And in the search for truth, I discovered love. In the search for love, I discovered God. And in God, I have found everything. It has truly been a pleasure to share with you tonight as you honor all the dream keepers. To all the honorees, I congratulate you and say, continue to keep the dream alive. Never, never, never give up on your dreams. Thank you very much. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. Deep in my heart, I do believe we shall overcome. No, I join hands so often with students and others behind jail bars singing it. We shall overcome. Sometimes we've had tears in our eyes when we joined together to sing it, but we still decided to. Hello. Uh, I'm in my office here in Washington, D.C., and uh, I am just elated that you were kind enough uh, to honor me uh, with the Martin Luther King Humanitarian uh, Award for uh, the Golden Royalties Chapter of the American Businesswomen's Association, ABWA. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, these are some tough times we're uh, experiencing uh, in, in our country. Uh, we're having a political disruption, we're having societal disruption and uh, frankly, uh, we're having medical disruptions uh, based on the fact that we're living through uh, the greatest pandemic uh, in a century. And uh, we are the survivors. Those of us who are uh, celebrating today are the survivors. And I want to lift up God uh, to thank him for you and the fact that I am uh, also here with you. I thank God for that. And I am just uh, tickled brown. Uh, that you've also chosen to uh, recognize uh, Emmanuel Cleaver III uh, for uh, one of your religious awards. So I want to express appreciation to you. And when some better times are here, when we're able to get together uh, again, when we are free of this vicious virus, uh, I'd love to be able to, to come to one of your meetings and bring you up to date on, on what's happening in Washington or whatever you'd like for me to do. Thank you and God bless you and happy Martin Luther King birthday. There's a little song that we sing in our movement down in the South. I don't know if you've heard it, but it has become the theme song. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. Deep in my heart, I do believe we shall overcome. No, I join hands so often with students and others behind jail bars singing it. We shall overcome. Sometimes we've had tears in our eyes when we join together to sing it, but we still decided to sing it. We shall overcome. No, before this victory is won, some will have to get thrown in jail some more, but we shall overcome. Don't worry about us. Before the victory is won, some of us will lose jobs, but we shall overcome. Before the victory is won, even some will have to face physical death. But if physical death is the price that some must pay to free their children from a permanent psychological death, then nothing shall be more redemptive.
<clears throat> we shall overcome. And with this faith, we will go out and adjourn the councils of despair and bring new light into the dark chambers of pessimism. And we will be able to rise from the fatigue of despair to the buoyancy of hope. And this will be a great America. We will be the participants in making it so. And so as I leave you this evening, I say, walk together, children. Don't you get weary. There's a great chap meeting in the promise.